Imagine being in a situation where the air around you is toxic, whether it's due to chemical spills, smoke, or even biological threats. One of the most effective pieces of protective gear in such a scenario is the gas mask. But have you ever wondered how these masks actually work? How do they let you breathe safely while blocking out harmful substances? Let's break it all down and see the science behind gas masks, from their filtration systems to their materials and history. Right here on History of Simple Things. At first glance, a gas mask might seem like nothing more than a glorified face covering, but inside, it's a complex system designed to remove harmful particles, gases, and even bacteria from the air before you inhale it. The secret lies in its filtration system, which typically consists of multiple layers working together. Most gas masks use a combination of three filtration techniques, particle filtration, chemical absorption, and mechanical separation. The first layer, usually a fine particulate filter, catches dust, smoke, and larger, harmful particles like biological contaminants. Think of it as an ultra-fine sieve that keeps out any solid matter floating in the air. Then comes the chemical filtration stage. This is where activated carbon, also known as activated charcoal, plays a huge role. Activated carbon is an incredibly porous material that can absorb and neutralize harmful chemicals. The pores trap dangerous gases like chlorine or ammonia and prevent them from reaching your lungs. This same material is used in water filters and even household air purifiers. Finally, some high-end gas masks include additional filtration stages, such as catalysts that break down toxic gases into harmless substances. For example, certain filters use a chemical reaction to neutralize carbon monoxide turning it into carbon dioxide, which is far less harmful in small amounts. A gas mask's filter system would be useless without a proper seal. That's why gas masks are designed to fit tightly against the face, preventing any unfiltered air from sneaking in. The mask is usually made from materials like rubber or silicone, which mold to the wearer's face to create an airtight seal. This is especially crucial in environments where deadly gases or biological threats are present. Just one small leak could mean the difference between life and death. To further ensure a secure fit, most gas masks come with adjustable straps that help pull the mask snugly against the skin. Some even have built-in voice diaphragms or drinking tubes, allowing users to communicate or stay hydrated without breaking the seal. Not all gas masks are the same. Some are built for industrial use, while others are designed for military or emergency responders. The most common types include full-face respirators, half-mask respirators, and escape hoods. Full-face respirators cover the entire face, including the eyes, providing comprehensive protection against airborne contaminants. These are often used by military personnel, firefighters, and first responders. They offer the highest level of protection, but can be bulky and uncomfortable to wear for long periods. Half-mask respirators, on the other hand, only cover the nose and mouth, they're commonly used in workplaces where people are exposed to dust, fumes, or chemicals. While they do provide a decent level of protection, they leave the eyes exposed, meaning they aren't suitable for all hazardous environments. Escape hoods are designed for emergency situations, such as fires or chemical spills. These are typically single-use disposable masks that can be quickly put on in a crisis to allow the wearer to escape from danger. They provide short-term protection, but aren't meant for prolonged exposure to harmful substances. As effective as gas masks are, they aren't perfect. 
The biggest limitation is that they can only protect against specific threats based on the type of filter they use. For instance, a gas mask designed for smoke inhalation won't necessarily protect against nerve agents or biological threats. This is why it's crucial to use the right type of filter for the situation at hand. Another challenge is the need for proper fit and maintenance. A poorly fitted gas mask won't create a full seal, rendering it useless. Filters also have a limited lifespan, meaning they need to be replaced regularly. Some filters can last for several hours, while others may only be effective for a short time, depending on the level of contamination. Additionally, gas masks don't provide an independent air supply. Unlike self-contained breathing apparatuses, SCBAs, which supply clean oxygen, gas masks simply filter the surrounding air. This means they won't be effective in low oxygen environments, such as smoke-filled rooms or underwater settings. Gas masks have been around for longer than you might think. Early versions date back to the 19th century when inventors created rudimentary respirators to protect workers from inhaling dangerous fumes in mines and factories. However, it wasn't until World War I that gas masks became widely recognized as essential life-saving equipment. During the war, chemical weapons like chlorine and mustard gas were used on the battlefield leading to horrific injuries and deaths. To counter these threats, armies developed gas masks equipped with charcoal and other filtering materials to protect soldiers from toxic gases. The designs evolved quickly, and by World War II, gas masks were widely issued to both military personnel and civilians in case of chemical attacks. Since then, Gas mask technology has continued to improve. Modern masks are lighter, more efficient, and capable of filtering a wider range of harmful substances. Today they are used not just in warfare, but also in industries like healthcare, construction, and emergency response. Owning a gas mask isn't enough. You need to know how to use it correctly. First, it's important to choose the right size and adjust the straps for a snug fit. A simple way to check if the mask is sealed properly is by performing a negative pressure test. This involves covering the filter intake, inhaling gently, and seeing if the mask collapses slightly against the face. If it does, the seal is secure. If not, adjustments need to be made. Breathing through a gas mask can feel restrictive at first, especially since some filters create resistance. It's important to stay calm and breathe slowly to avoid panic. Regular training and practice can help ensure that, in an emergency, wearing a gas mask feels natural rather than overwhelming. Filters should also be checked and replaced as needed. Most filters have an expiration date and will lose effectiveness over time. Keeping extra filters on hand and knowing how to swap them quickly is essential for anyone relying on a gas mask for protection. Gas masks are an incredible feat of engineering, allowing people to breathe safely in some of the most dangerous environments. From filtering out dust and smoke to neutralizing toxic gases, they are an essential tool for military personnel, first responders, and even everyday workers in hazardous industries. However, they are not a one-size-fits-all solution, and using them correctly is just as important as having one in the first place. So, the next time you see a gas mask in a movie or a documentary, you'll know that it's more than just a creepy-looking face shield. It's a life-saving device with a fascinating history and cutting-edge science behind it. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. 
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.